In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to set up particle studies inside SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. These allow the injection of either liquid or solid particles into an existing flow stream. Uh, so we'll be doing an overview. We'll look at how they can also enable you to look at accumulation or accretion and erosion in your designs and considerations to make sure you're getting accurate results. Now, to set up particle studies, it requires already having a flow simulation uh, created with results. So if you want some help with that, there's some tutorials linked in the video description below. But we're just going to jump right into an existing project. To create our particle study, we're going to right click on particle studies and go to the wizard. We'll click the next arrow. For my injection location, I'm going to choose the inlet face of the model. And I'll set 500 points. For the particle properties, I'm going to choose water. And I'll set the size of the particle to be 5 ten thousandths of an inch. Under mass flow rate, I'll set a flow rate of 2 thousandths of a pound per second. And we could here specify initial particle velocity and temperature if we wanted to, or additional injection locations. Let's click Next. We can choose what physical effects we want to simulate. So gravity is on by default. We'll also include accretion. That'll let us see where the particles might build up. We can specify wall conditions. So I'm going to use the default absorption here, meaning once a particle touches a solid wall, it will be considered accumulated. Finally, we have settings related to the appearance of the particles. I'm going to set the size to 0 0.01 and the default parameter to be velocity. There's also some constraints down here. And these control the lifespan of the particle. So we have a maximum distance traveled, maximum time, and maximum number of iterations. If these values are too small, then you may see particles disappearing before you'd expect them to. If they're too long, then the only downside is you'll have an extended solve time. Finally, the particle study is ready to run. So we'll click Run here, and this runs on top of the existing flow results. So we can actually test many different particle studies without having to rerun the full flow simulation. Let's right click on the injection and choose show so we can visualize the path of these particles. We can also right click and play to animate this. And we can see the particles spread out a little bit before they contact the divider plate in the catch can, at which point they're being accumulated. So the assumption here is that any water particles in the air will condense onto that plate. And then we could just drain them out the bottom, potentially. On the injection, I want to point out that this velocity is actually the fluid velocity. We have special parameters after we've run our particle study. So we have things like particle density, and I can choose here particle velocity, which will be different than the fluid velocity. All right, so let's stop this injection animation. And I'll rename this injection to be injection 0.0005 water. And let's see what will happen if we use a smaller droplet size. So let's clone our injection. And we'll call this one. 0 0.00005 water. So I'm going to edit this injection definition. And we're just going to add an extra decimal place, an extra zero there, to reduce the size of our droplets to be a little more finely atomized. And now I'll need to rerun just the particle study. So I'll right click and run. 
the particle study. Now this is all predicated on the assumption that the size of our particles and amount of them is small enough that it won't influence the overall flow results. So that's important to consider when you're using the particle study. And that's what allows us to run these just on top of the existing fluid flow. So now we can right click on the new injection and show that. And we can see these smaller droplet sizes. Uh, it looks like a great deal of them are striking that divider wall, but some of them are missing it. They're actually getting caught up in the surrounding airflow and some are making their way through to the outlet. So this is the type of analysis that the particle study allows us to do. Now, we can get more data out of here. For instance, we could create a surface plot. If I go to insert a surface plot, I'll choose a surface, such as the face of that divider, and I should be able to plot things like accumulation rate. And I can plot maybe mass accumulation rate just for a particular injection. So let's look at the smaller water droplet size. And I'll scale this to the automatic plot scales. Let's just hide the injection for now. And we can see where and how much this water would be accumulating in terms of a mass accumulation rate. So this could actually be useful to see how often we would need to drain the catch can. Also, if we want to see how much is making it to the outlet, we can insert a surface parameter. choose the outlet face and plot something like the mass accumulation rate. We can also see here number of particles. So out of our 500 particles we're putting in, we're getting 65 out the outlet. Let's take a look at a quick different example. Here we've got a chamber with many different cutouts in it. This time we're injecting solid particles. We have erosion enabled. And our default wall condition is reflection, which allows us to input coefficients of restitution for how the particles should behave after they hit a wall. Note that wall conditions can also be locally overridden, so you can insert wall conditions on particular faces. Finally, if we show the injection location here and animate. We'll see all these particles bouncing around. And we can also use those surface parameters to get an idea for how evenly they're distributed. Now, if you do have solid particles flowing through your system, then you may also be concerned about erosion which we've enabled here, and we have a corresponding surface plot parameter that we can use for erosion. You can get an idea of the type of wear that you'd experience and which areas it would be occurring in for the given injection locations. The number of starting points is also a very important consideration in that if we take the extreme case of only analyzing one starting point, we'll only see the simulation of one theoretical particle injection. So uh, it's actually important, and this is why you see in most of these examples that we're using many hundreds or thousands even of uh, starting points. So we're getting a, a much more detailed analysis uh, because it will only ever show things like accumulation or erosion in areas where there actually is a particle in the simulation, and we only get particles in uh, these spaces if we increase the number of starting points. And lastly, don't forget that the whole particle study runs on the assumption that the particles are not so large that they will influence the fluid flow.
Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments below what type of content you'd like to see next.